Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. I don't like that. That's too dark. Okay, I'll tolerate that. I'm excited. So, I'm going to be starting a new segment, and I'm going to be starting it because I have now seen Suicide Squad. Two and a half times. When I say two and a half, I mean I went and then I was watching it and then I had to go do something. So I just left in the middle because I had time and I knew how long the movie was. So I had just gone to kind of just be with Suicide Squad. So I have had a love relationship with Harley Quinn ever since I met her. Now, let me just quickly explain to you the premise of this new construction that I'm coming up with, and you guys are more than welcome to request in the comments below the next character you'd like to see, and we'll go from there. So I am going to begin a segment called Psychology of, and it's going to be Psychology of Different comic book characters. Now, I am not the biggest, like, crazy fan of DC and Marvel and all those things, but I am a fan of the psychology behind these things and why have they been so popular for so long? What is it about these characters that just hold so true? Why do they keep becoming popular over and over and over again with new generations in different ways repetitively? And my character that initially inspired not this segment but my love of the psychology aspect was the Joker and that was I'm not sure how many years ago but the first time I saw the Dark Knight um, with Heath Ledger I was like I need to understand like how do I how do I grasp this how do I get into this how do I figure this out and so I became fascinated with the Joker, and I got every single book I could possibly get my hands on for the Joker. Let me tell you, there's some pretty bad ones out there. Like, and I don't mean, like, bad, like, oh my gosh, they're so graphic. Like, I mean bad, like, they're not very well written, and they really don't hold true to the Joker, and they're slightly just, just unnecessary additions to the Joker's character, or they're just completely played off of the wrong Joker. As I got to know the Joker... I came to really be concerned with those around him because he has such a lucrative just I don't care about anybody in his life and the only person in his life that seems to be consistent as far as a potential partner in crime is Miss Harley Quinn. The first time I came into contact with Harley Quinn was when I was with my ex and he would watch the 1950s, 60s um, animated series of Batman and Harley Quinn started to come into the picture and she was constantly getting abused and destroyed by the Joker and like it didn't make sense why she was constantly going back to him. Um, at the time I really hadn't come to terms with my own relationship issues with the guy that I was with or the guy prior to him so I was more than willing to accept that she was just in this relationship and it was fine like it was just normal just I don't even want to go there and then I came to terms with my own relationships and I came to terms with the abuse and I came to terms with what happens when a woman is in an abusive relationship and what changes in her. Now Harley, the story of Harley, if you go by what I believe if you go by Paul Dini and maybe a few others have like expanded but Paul Dini was the original creator of Harley Quinn and he was the original person to put her onto the animated series, which is where she first became um, a character in the Batman series. When she first entered into the picture, all she was was a deranged character that was mildly obsessed with the Joker, loved him undeniably, loved him unconditionally, and followed him everywhere. Kind of brainless, ditzy, and mildly obnoxious. Now, as you 
as Harley grew as a character and learned to be a character herself, you learn that Harley is Harley Quin Harleen Quinzel, a <sighs> psychologist at Arkham Asylum, and she is assigned to help the Joker. And she ends up falling for the Joker because she thinks she can fix him. Like so many other girls in abusive relationships, Harley Quinn falls in love with a man who is abusive and believes that she has the power to change him. She has the power to take care of him, especially when he has so adamantly instilled in her that he was terribly abused as a child and she is the only one who hears him and all he wants to do is laugh and his father would never let him laugh and so that's why he became the Joker so she believes no one understands him properly and when he escapes from Arkham he's brought back by the Batman and he's been completely destroyed in terms of beaten severely and he's back in Arkham and because of her love for the Joker and her feelings of protectiveness and admiration and obsession she loses her ability to control herself and she snaps and she becomes obsessive and controlling and Harley Quinn. She literally becomes a psychotic twist on herself because her psyche has broke. Now as you follow Harley the story changes depending on which depiction of Harley you follow. Now there's the Arkham Asylum as far as the computer game goes where she gets overtly more sexualized slightly, a little bit of a schoolgirl outfit thing going on, some cleavage, but she's still the deranged, very violent, crazy clown counterpart. And she still holds the obsessiveness over the Joker, but he still uses her. He never loves her. He never gives her sex. He never has intercourse with her. It's always violence and aggression and then small acts of kindness, like any other abusive relationship. Then you continue and she starts to get into what's getting weirder and weirder. And then she separates from the Joker briefly, pairs up with Poison Ivy, falls in love with Poison Ivy, which is never really fully stated until later, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. Falls in love with Poison Ivy, stays with her for a while, goes back to the Joker, comes back to Poison Ivy, goes back to the Joker, Poison Ivy tries to kill her, the Joker tries to kill her, Batman saves her, so she falls in love with Batman, and it just kind of goes in a circle <laughs> with the three of these characters being her main obsession, depending on who's treating her the worst and who is treating her the best and who is caring enough and who is helping her obsession. Now she is a character formulated on the basis of Stockholm Syndrome. She is formulated on the idea that she is born and just obsessively sure that her captive is innocent. And every time she breaks that strand with the Joker, he finds her again and he tries to catch her. Now when the Joker finally does try to have feelings for her and begins to feel emotions for her, he tries to kill her because he doesn't know what to do with these emotions. And the Batman saves her and she ends up falling in love with the Batman, which is there's like one one book where she's in love with Batman for like the, the whole of the, the issue. But for the most part, she's Joker friendly. Now, fast forward. We're now in the day and age of Beef of the New 52 and Suicide Squad. She has been hyperly sexualized, turned into this character that has sex with many different people. Um, she is turned into someone who is being passed around as if she is a prostitute. She is being passed around from man to man um, by the Joker, by herself, in other ways. And one of the comics actually opens with her having sexual relations with Deadpool that is not the Harley Quinn that was ever my Harley. She's never been that type of girl that she's passed around. Um, and if she is, it's part of the syndrome where she's been completely oblivious to the idea that she could be viewed as property instead of a person. So she, when she's passed around, she's either property to the Joker or not at all. Um, the only time I've ever seen her in a fully consensual romantic relationship that seems healthy is Poison Ivy. Now, this is the Bombshell Collection by DC. This is the first volume and it's called Enlisted. Um, this is a newer 
series, I believe. This one came out in... Come on. I need you to not rip, but still give me pages. The first printing was the first month of this year, and it is a 1950s-esque pin-up relation of all of the super women and villains in the world going up against the Nazis in the 40s. Now, I absolutely adored this. I thought it was brilliant, wonderful. The art style, because I do really like the ultimate pin-up style, I really loved the art and the depiction of Harley. I absolutely adored. While it is sexualized, it is not so much sexualized that you feel as if you've done something wrong or she's turned into some sort of lesser person. Um, but actually the first time you see her, she is in the cell and she is fully dressed, which is when she's Harley and Quinzel, um, which to me demonstrates that when she's intelligent, she's a valued human, and when she is not, and she's ditzy, and back to her Harley Quinn self, she is a sexual object. Um, I will admit that this series was fantastic. I loved it. I'm on the second volume. I finished that as well. I'm waiting for the third volume to come out. Her relationship with Poison Ivy is confirmed in this comic series. I will not elaborate on that further, but it is officially confirmed that she does have a lesbian consensual relationship with Poison Ivy. Now, it is debated as to whether or not it is a monogamous relationship, or if it is poly, or if it is open, but it is a lesbian relationship that she and um, Poison Ivy do have that does seem much more healthy and reliable and a much better suit for her. But now, let's talk about the latest and most recent depiction. This is Suicide Squad. I purchased this yesterday, and I've already read and finished the whole book. It was very easy. Um, I've seen the movie so many times that even if I found myself skimming, I knew what was going on. There are 370-something pages, but it's a mass market. You guys know I don't like mass markets, but for Suicide Squad, I'll bend. Now, in this, in the film... She and the Joker's relationship is depicted as slightly loving and admirable and affectionate. And he's flying all over creation trying to save Harley Quinn. The book is the original script before they cut it and changed it for ratings reasons or for viewing reasons. I'm really not sure why they changed it. The book is a much more accurate depiction of the two of them and their relationship, where he is abusive with random act of kindness, um, he is obsessive and controlling and overly excited about grabbing her and getting her back. Um, there is one scene in the movie, if you have not seen the movie, um, I'm gonna talk with the mouse until the spoiler is over. So now that the mouse is up, fast forward until you don't see the mouse anymore. Um, he's gonna help me. He's gonna be my, my spoiler mouse. Um, so there's a scene in the film where Harley Quinn is pushed from a airplane by the Joker and the Joker is pushing her out to save her in the film. In the book, he's pushing her out to kill her. He wants her dead. So that's a pretty big difference of relationships and and ideas of how Harley should be demonstrated. Now, I don't know everything about everything that everyone's ever written about Harley. I want to. It's a goal for me. But at this point, this is what I've gathered is she is overtly, overly sexualized, um, used to forward plots in situations where it's unnecessary, abused by relationships that are unnecessarily abusing, as well as abused by Batman in certain situations where she is used as lure for the Joker. Um, the Joker is outlandishly terrible as a human and probably a certifiable psychopath. Um, so 
overall, Harley is my all-time favorite character in the DC and Marvel universe. She is the most close to my home and heart. She is the one that got me into the DC universe the most. She is also the reason that I have begun to read graphic novels again. I really, once I saw the Suicide Squad for the first time, was like, okay, I have to just, I have to figure this out. And I started doing the research and I found out what I found out and I continued to research as much as I could. This is my overall ideas and thoughts on the psychology of Harley Quinn at this time. Things may change in the future, things may adjust, and things may come to light, but at this point this is what I know, this is what I understand, and this is my view. These are my opinions, my thoughts, and if you don't agree I do understand and I respect that. Please understand that in the comments you are more than welcome to comment down below, begin discussions, and request the next DC or Marvel character that you would like to see psychoanalyzed. And let me know if you enjoy this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. And I will talk to you guys in my next video about something else. Bye!